Today is World Mental Health Day, and I am so thrilled that you have decided to think about your mental health and the people around you, their mental health as well. But today I want to challenge you to also consider your dog's mental health. When was the last time you thought about your dog or someone else's dog and really considered how their mental health is doing? When you see a dog that is barking at you or lunging at you or is running underneath a table, do you think, gee, that person really didn't train their dog or gee, that owner is really irresponsible? Or do you think, I wonder how that dog's mental health is doing? I wonder when the last time that dog's mental health got treatment? How is anyone sympathizing with that dog? These are the things that I really want you to consider. And if right now at home you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've never thought of my dog's mental health. I don't even know where to start. Well, then this video is for you because in this video, I'm going to be talking about how we check in with our dog's mental health. And I'm going to be giving you step-by-step -step tactics that you can implement right now to enrich your dog's life. Keep watching. What's up guys, it's Jenna with Dog Liaison where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health needs and on this channel we break down scientific research in order to inform and educate us on how to train dogs. So if you're interested in a nerdier approach to canine cognition, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Now, if you're new here, first of all, welcome, and I do want to let you know that canine mental health is something that is a symbol on my channel. It is something that I talk about a lot. It is anxiety disorders and mental health disorders on dogs is something I spend a lot of time focusing on. But today I want to help you learn about that. I want to help you understand what we mean when we say canine mental health. So I'll be honest. When I first started my channel almost a year ago, I was talking to a gentleman and I said that my channel focuses on dog mental health. And when I said that, his response was, that sounds like propaganda. That sounds like a marketing scheme. And I'll admit that at the time, my feelings got hurt a little bit. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? No, it's not. It's not a marketing scheme. I really do care because it's something that I'm so passionate about. It's something that I absolutely love to talk about and love to um, spread the word on. But upon reflection, it really gave me an opportunity to see how limiting our beliefs are, what the conditioned response is in the world about dog mental health. We are conditioned to believe that a barking dog is a misbehaved dog. We are conditioned to believe that a dog bite or separation anxiety is just misbehavior that needs training, that we just have to correct. We are conditioned to believe that we just need to push a couple buttons and teach the dog what to do and everything will be okay. But in order to actually treat these disorders, we need to take a holistic approach we need to think about your dog's enrichment. And that is something that I want to talk about because you're kind of wondering, she said the word enrichment a couple of times. What does that mean? Enrichment, quite frankly, is anything your dog likes to do. <laughs> if your dog likes it, it falls underneath the category of enrichment. Now, that could be something like playing fetch or running or whatever, but it actually is a lot more than that. <laughs> Just throwing on something like a lavender candle when it's time for your dog to go lay down on the bed or playing wind chimes for your dog to listen to or taking your dog into an environment with a lot of smells and letting him just smell the air or playing with bubbles with your dog. These are all considered enrichment as well. These are sensory enrichment. And so what I've done actually is I've created a free PDF, a free document that you can download right now. It's in the description box below. It has 50 different types of enrichment that you can do with your dog, most of which you can do for free right now. Now, it is completely free. All you have to do is check the description box below and it's all yours. If you do end up pulling that up and checking it out, 
Tell us in the comments what ideas you liked and how you're going to implement them into your dog's mental health, your dog's enrichment right now. The second thing that you can do to help your dog's mental health is to check your dog's flow. Now, believe it or not, flow is not something that is like, you know, voodoo or extra spiritual or, you know, it's not magical stuff, okay? Flow is actually something that even human psychologists talk about all the time. It is actually proven in science, okay? Flow is basically when a dog is in their zone, when they are doing what they are bred to do, when they are doing something that is self-reinforcing that they just love to do. So for example, I have a Dalmatian and my dog's flow is when we're out on a safari and he gets to pop his nose into a bunch of gopher holes. He goes from gopher hole to gopher hole and he smells and he checks things out and that is his flow. So your dog's flow could very well be just sitting on your lap. If you have a little toy breed, a little Cavalier King Charles that just loves being near you, that could be flow. So what I want you to do is find your dog's flow. What is your dog naturally good at? What does he enjoy doing? And where is he most in his element? When is he most in his zone? Tell us that in the comments below as well. The third way to enrich and enhance your dog's mental health today is by monitoring your dog's day-to-day -day stress. Now, I don't just mean bad stress, like, oh, he doesn't like that, or he's angry, or he's frustrated, or he, whatever. It doesn't have to be negative. It could just be positive. It could be just a matter of he goes out for a long walk and exercises a whole lot, and that's very taxing. Um, but you have to think to yourself, should it have been that taxing? For example, if you never take your dog out, if you have a little Labrador right now and he hardly ever gets to go outside on an adventure, and so when you do take him out on an adventure, it's five minutes in and he's already tapped out like, oh my gosh, this is hard and I can't go on, that's not a very good sign. <laughs> um, we need to have a little bit more conditioning in there to make sure that he's on the go. And this kind of brings me into my next point, which is quality of sleep. Think of it this way. If you met a person who slept 22 and a half hours a day every day and just slept and slept and slept and every time you turned around was sleeping, you would probably think something's wrong, right? That person is either in depression or that person needs help. That person needs some sort of activity to wake him up in the morning that person needs purpose, right? And yet, many, many, many dogs sleep that much, if not more. Now I know it's fact that dogs need more sleep than humans. That is true, okay? That's absolutely true. But not 22 and a half hours a day, <laughs> right? If your dog is sleeping that much, every time you turn around, he is often in the corner snoozing, then you have to ask yourself, how much of that is quality sleep? Is he really in REM? So this kind of comes down to we're thinking about the quality of your dog's sleep, not necessarily just quantity. On this World Mental Health Day, I don't want you to only think about your mental health, your family member's mental health, your friend's mental health. All of that is important, absolutely. But I also want to emphasize the importance of your dog's mental health and your cat for that matter. On this channel, we focus on dog behavior, but whatever your pet is, think about their mental health. When was the last time they were enriched? Are you sure that your dog isn't depressed? Are you certain that your dog is living his life the way he's supposed to? Or maybe your dog is enriched. Maybe your dog's mental health is fine, but you need to start considering the other dogs in the world. Instead of jumping to the conclusion that a barking dog is a bad dog, instead of jumping to the conclusion that a scared dog just needs more training and that the owners are just bad owners, think about the dog's mental health. Think about it from that perspective. If you enjoyed this video and you think others should also watch it, do me a favor and hit that like button. Tell me in the comment section below what you got out of this video and share it with friends. And don't forget to download the PDF in the description box below. I promise it's free. You can do whatever you want with it. See you guys later.